Uh, Bruce is going to record this as well, Katie, so that if you need to <laughs> re listen to anything, you can do that. Thank you. Oh, they can't get in there. I can hear Katie about as cl clear as anybody, but I can't hear anything else hardly. But that's all right. It doesn't matter. What? Is she's is there anybody you? waiting to get in? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I can I can go on to the meeting. And, you want to make me host, and I'll go I on to the meeting, and, and, and then you can just use thing? this as a dump terminal. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or you can make me co-host. Doesn't matter. Is that the only mic? It's the best we can do. So yes. I would suggest that it's good enough. Well, I think we're all. I think we're all set. I think we're good enough. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah, just trying to get the video of everybody. Kind of. Okay. Now we're right. trying to encourage the fire department to invest in a Zoom account. <laughs> I, I'm just, you know, from Carl? personal experience. Right I there. can hear Bruce. That's because the mic is near him. I don't even know how to do it. Okay. Well, let, let me sign on first. Okay. Um, oh, this computer hasn't been on the PNFD Wi-Fi before. Remind me the password. Eight hundred three. Eight hundred two. Two two five. Two two five. You just. I'm not worried a bit about it. It looks like you're on it. Yeah, but I'm. I want to be able to turn the camera back out. Oh, I see. Okay. That ring, Kim. Oh, it's cooking. You want me to, Bruce? You want me to sit over there next to you? Do you want to sit here? No, I don't care. I just grab a chair. Okay. Yeah. Wonder what the weather is. Record. Sixty-eight here right now. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Oh, it's cold. That's it's gonna right. be really nice tomorrow. Eighty-two. <laughs> here and sunny. <laughs> All right, you ready to call me? Oh, yeah, you did. Very, very good. Okay, let me in, uh, Bruce. You're in. Twenty-one needs my player. Excuse me. Yeah, and more. Yeah, no, they can't hear anything hardly. Host. Yes. <laughs> no, we can't. You ready to get started? Typhoon coming. You know that? Typhoon set. He's a long way to go where he is. He's in a talent. Oh, he's up there. Oh, yeah. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost there, huh? We're all set? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So we, so, what are you going to yeah. do? Are you, calling, are you calling, are you calling documents up on the screen or? Uh, I'm, host, I'm hosting the Zoom meeting. Okay, so can do Seth and those on Zoom have access to the documents? They're on the- I've got the documents printed off. Yeah. I don't need any help with documents. Good. I don't want to task you people with unnecessary stuff. All right. Yeah, so we'll start on page four. So actually, page four? Okay. Page four to start. Which, uh, all mine say page one. So, oh, there's page two. Uh, page one. I don't know what they're in reference to. So, what, what's the uh, document? It's the cash receipts. And disbursements for the year ended June 30th, 2021. Cash receipts. So it's basically page, page four of the uh, audit. Oh, the audit. Okay.
That was the year end audit page for 2021. That's three. Any of that? That's three. Yeah. Increase of 368 new cash. That's the plan. Relies due to the, the code. Here's the audit right here. One, two. <laughs> I had three and four is on the print. Well, go ahead. Start talking. I don't want to hold you up. Yeah, we are talking. Aren't you listening? I'm listening as best I can, but I can't hear much, but that's all right. <laughs> so everybody's good. Everybody's good with that page. No questions on that yes. page. All right. We'll go on to the, uh, the next page. It's page five. So you're going on a field trip. You want to sit down here? Nope. Just stare at the back of the laptop. Um, page five is the East Montpelier balance sheet as of October 31st, 2021. The top line says assets, current assets on it. We have that page. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the packets has it easy because it should be marked as five on your bottom corner. Yeah, it is. Right. Yep. Seth, you got it? No, we're still looking, but keep talking. It's okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're going back to the financial statements, but oh, here we go. Page five. Page five, they want. Okay, yeah. we got it. Not page five. No, it's, yeah. it's page one. It's called the balance sheet. East Montpelier Volunteer. Yeah, I've got that. I've got that one in my hand. As of October 31st? Yes. Okay. I've got it. Right. So you can see the yep. account um, contingency is maxed out at its forty thousand. So we're not contributing any more of the revenue. So yeah. Account at this point, mm -hmm. everything's going into the capital. <clears throat> yeah, it's at forty one. Is that forty one? Yeah. Yeah. That's just how it landed. So we didn't make the adjustment oh, yeah. backwards to. Yeah. Um, but we're not contributing to that anymore. Your two loan assets. In terms of liabilities on the rescue pumper loan and the ambulance loan, there and long term liabilities are the 88,000 and 87,000. Yep. Yep. Got it. Anyway, right. was, was that a question or did somebody say something? Sorry. Gotcha. No, I just said I've got it. Okay. And and, just, uh, just a question in terms of. These are all separate accounts. So there's a separate account for donations, separate account for contingency, separate account for capital. Is that correct? Um, there's a separate account for capital, donations, and the savings. The others are combined. They're tracked separately, but they're combined. Yeah, QuickBooks can track. You're using QuickBooks, right? Right. QuickBooks can track things separately, but it's all in the same account. Okay. Do you, with the capital, the capital, do you? Is that equipment replacement capital or is that building? That's, that's, it, that's everything we contribute towards the capital. So there's monies that go towards building, there's money that goes towards, um, we've used some towards truck repairs. You know, okay. if we had a major engine blow in our truck a couple of years ago that we replaced out of there, uh, we had, um, you know, then it's all truck replacements. Yeah, does that, yeah. Does that kind of figure in, you know, the depreciation on those trucks that you were putting in enough into that? Well, they, could, they have a capital plan. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. yeah, so what we're so what we're putting in is all ambulance revenue. Yeah. So when ambulance revenue comes in, we just turn we right, right. We deduct the expenses of um, paramedic billing, the um, paramedic intercept costs, and um, the defibrillator costs out of those loans right on the front side. And then the remaining balance of that, so we think there's an expense deduction, and then we would split it typically. 25, 75, 25% 25 for contingency, 75% would go to capital. Mm -hmm. Now that we've reached on the contingency account, we've reached yes. the 40,000 thresholds, 100% of that revenue now is going into the capital account. Great. Does that answer that? Yeah. Any other questions on the balance sheet? Nope. nope. Okay. Uh, page six is profit and loss versus actual on the ambulance budget. <clears throat> the 
You have that one, Seth? Yep. Um, the one error on here that you would see when you look at, if you're reading the percentage lines and you look at the dispatch being 106.1%, yeah. that's actually not, there was one of the payments that was um, allocated, it should have been allocated against fire and it double allocated against the ambulance. So oh. it's actually, so ambulance is not actually over expenditure on that. The other expenses are tracking right along where they should be you know, for a third of the way through mm -hmm. the year. <clears throat> and it's 0%. We haven't used anything in training. Uh, not yet. We have some people coming up to go to classes coming up that we'll be spending those monies out. Now, can you just tell me the salary for Marshall? Is that bro that's broken up separately, or I don't understand that? So it was earmarked when we took on the um, contract for Marshall mm -hmm. that that dollar amount was applied against salary to increase the salary proportions. So, so that money that comes in goes towards salaries. It goes right. It allows the salary line to have grown during that period of time. Um, the other ones are paying, Plainfields pays in against the contract and things and disperses accordingly to that. So uh, technically probably Marshfield does as well. It was just an allocated number that allows us mm -hmm. to raise the um, financial support towards the salary line. So that's how it's worded in the contract? Anyway? What's that? The, no, it's not worded that in the contract. That's oh. how we, we manage it within the budgets and have for four or five years at this point. So up top where it says Marshfield budget payment, mm -hmm. that's different than this salary Marshfield. No, that's the same. It's the same amount of money. Right. That's the same figure. Right. Right. That's why I'm questioning it. They put it towards salary. They take it in and it goes towards salary. Right. Instead of towards capital or towards other operations. Right. Yeah, but capital is a different revenue. Yeah, I'm just saying it doesn't go that way. It, right, but it wouldn't anyway. The money that comes that goes to capital is, comes in from ambulance calls, ambulance revenue, not a contract. Right. Can you remind me what the ambulance tax is? So the state of Vermont, um, probably five years ago now, decided to create a tax platform to tax the revenues on ambulance services. And the concept that they would pay more for Medicaid payments, mm. and of which they do. So there is a higher percentage of return than on the Medicaid payments than we would normally have. So they're giving with one hand and taking back with the other. Right. Essentially, yeah. right. They're creating a cash revenue stream out of a platform that they can. And yeah. So some squads win. Others don't. Huh. Huh. How has it worked out here? It's okay. I mean, we haven't really lost by it. You know, okay. I think it's somewhat neutralized overall. There's some years I think we've come out a little bit ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> and that's the that's the concept behind it that it will kind of be balancing itself over the years. But you can't look at one year to the next because they may not be equally proportioned based on what this uh, how the squad did overall hmm. and it's yeah and it says percentage of budget zero is this post we haven't paid that yet that bill hasn't come to do yet is the idea behind that analogous to act 60 with the schools where it's supposed to no. even out revenues amongst different no no this no. is a total separate yeah and you know again it depends on what your medicaid calls are in a year and yeah. what your reimbursement levels are on that from the federal levels okay. Okay. It hasn't hurt us as far as we can see, but, but I think overall everybody's pretty quiet about it. Once we, people were a little uneasy when it first came onto the table because it was something new, but it seemed to have worked itself through. And the you know the payoffs on the other side, we've seen that payoff come back. So. Okay. Um, the other highlight on this page would be your ambulance revenue. So the insurance revenue through the end of October, so July through October was uh, 48,000, almost $49,000 so far coming in. 
So that's been pretty good. And that's for a third of the year. Right. Mm -hmm. Has, it, has the, the billing and payment slowed down at all because of COVID and shortages of staff and all those things? No, the, the payment, that's, you know, again, that goes through its own cycle. The issue of how they pay, sometimes we get smaller months of payments and then mm -hmm. we get big payments that we right, catch up right. to some of the for two, three months. Um, yeah. But I mean, to be at, you know, $50,000 in three months is pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Is that typical? You know, for, I'm just out of curiosity. Have you seen a flux? With it's the, four months, actually. It's one third of the year. We, we've actually seen um, an increase of call volume to the level for the last year and a half or so. Interesting. Yeah. So the revenue stream has reflected that, you know, overall in the collections for last year versus in the collections we're seeing this year, is, you know, reflecting the higher call volumes. And then the bottom line there is the COVID vaccination contracts. And again, we have um, staffing that's working vaccine clinics, um, probably on an average of two to three days a week. You know, we've got, two to three to five people depending on the week that are working vaccine clinics so yeah. how does that work do they get paid directly or do they pay you and then you pay your staff so we were given a grant from the state um probably a year and a half ago now maybe mm -hmm. for a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars and then that was for us to expend strictly for covid um, payroll for doing clinics, vaccine clinics, um, mm -hmm. as well as doing testing sites and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's an equatable dollar that comes out of there in terms of hourly figures that they pay at like $70 an hour is what they figure the resource goes out at. They pay mileage, they pay vehicle expense that would go out if we're taking vehicles to these sites and things. Mm -hmm. And then we bill against that 100000 as we expend it. And then they reimburse us and they're typically pretty good on the reimbursement schedule it's you know it's um not too far out we're about twenty thousand behind right now and by day is it the, the state of health or? department of health okay. yeah and after all this is over with that money will dry up probably right it will we're actually in the process of negotiating i think to um have a second round of it come in again mm -hmm. as a there's been a dramatic increase of vaccine clinic demand right now, especially with the children coming on board. Mm -hmm. And with all the booster shots, um, they're running a clinic at the Berlin Mall. It's running seven days a week, you know, from typically eight o'clock in the morning till seven or eight at night, most nights. They do a nice job up there. That's what we're yeah. our boosters. Yeah. yeah, so they, you know, so that's requiring a lot of staff and they're using EMS staff as well as um, nursing students to come in and cover those. Mm -hmm. We're getting regular requests probably three or four weeks to go to different clinics around. We're actually being asked to go a long ways right now. We don't have people going, but they're asking for like Springfield, Vermont, Brattleboro, oh, wow. and things um, as well as, you know, the local schools in Barry City, Montpelier and everything. We've got some people do those. So it says vaccine contract 239. Mm -hmm. Is that how much is left out of the 100,000? That's how much is left. Yeah, so I think not, that's what your total is for the for now. That's what your total is that we spent so far since the beginning of this fiscal year. Oh, that's okay. If you said there was a hundred thousand dollar grant, that must be here somewhere, right? This grant. I don't know. It should, the money sure. shows up if they as they request it. it doesn't it, the money doesn't come in like in a block or hundred right. thousand? It's 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 paid. Yeah, the bill for the money. Yeah, oh, I see. As you incur the expense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So, like I said, we're in arrears of. 20,000 right now. So once we see that, that up to 43,000. Does that, does that cost, you know, in the, this does, if this evaporates away, do we, is this just going to disappear as well? Or does it, do we absorb it in the regular operating budget? Yeah, so there's no, no cost expense to us. We're actually um, making a little bit of money off of this. We, um, so we're paying the vaccinators $50 an hour. And so we're taking $20 an hour in to cover the payroll expenses and anything other operationally. Then the mileage comes in. We also get a call out. So every call out we get, we get $400 for the call out. 
operation of the thing goes. Do we have a person who's um, managing the call outs and she'll do scheduling and things for the clinics that are under her. The other one she doesn't do is Berlin because that's being run separately, but people can sign into that one. When you say $400 a call out, is that a person or is that- No, that's out? a general, just a cost per call out. I see. Yeah, and so those fees are going in to cover any operational expenses that we have on this side of it. Yeah. So once, once the program is done, it will be totally closed. There won't be any more expenses to it or profit from it. We're not building any infrastructure that we got to emphasis. <laughs> no, these platforms are really mobile platforms. Yeah. They can pick them up, break them down in a couple hours. Typically, you know, we have um, some totes and boxes that we'll, if we do our own clinics and things, we just take those, set them up as basic supplies for doing the IP access and doing, you know, personal protection. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other questions on that page? Nope. Looks good to me. So page seven, um, Seth, that's the profit and loss actual fire. Is that profit and loss by class? Um, yes. Yep. So it's yep. a profit and loss budget versus actual fire to be entitled at top July through October. Yep. So why does it show East Montpelier contribution to loss contribution? 50% East Montpelier, 100% Calus. What's the, did East Montpelier not pay their bill? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, they bill differently than you guys do. So we've, so far, we're taking in 67% of the budget overall for budget money contributions coming in. And there's a couple of things that jump out. Mm -hmm. Building, is it two? 90% of the budget one and a half is spent. And what's this other one here? Okay. So, okay, so, let's do, so let's do one at a time. So the building is, um, we had a large expense this year on preventative maintenance contracts or for servicing the building up mechanical systems in terms of filters and changes to all that. Um, not really related to COVID. It was more related to just, it was General time to replace yeah. and do maintenance and things. And some of the expenses, some of the filters we have are really expensive and the scrubbers and things like that. So and there was some, uh, with that in the service contract, there's also some repair pieces that come along with mechanical pieces that go onto it. Um, we also had a well pump fail with a controller in there. So we had to change the well pump and the controller. Okay. The, the firefighting supplies? Yeah, the 300. Yeah, so firefighting supplies, there's an, a number of things that factor into that. There's um, some equipment that was purchased for the UTV. There was a portable the high pressure pumps and things that was purchased for uh, forestry firefighting. So well, UTV, that's that newest little thing you yeah. right? So there's some equipment for that, and then there's some regular equipment and supplies for um, that we need just for typical repairs and update, or we had pieces break, we had some holes we had to replace and things, so. When these things, like with your scrubbers and things like that, that we're right now, we're, you know, Paul, do we have like a capital is there a threshold on the rent that then bills to the capital account where instead of coming out like an operational line item, or is it, is this, how does that get billed? Let's say, you know, when you have these major, when you have the major maintenance expenses. So we typically haven't reached into the capital to cover those. We're typically, we see how the year, we see how the year goes out operationally and then yeah. we may draw some from the contingency account to fund balance if we needed to at the end of the year, but overall, we may be down on something else, you know? Yeah, and, yeah, got and it. Just, yeah. Some people set a threshold about, let's say, $5,000 in terms of yeah. capital, but it's discretionary. Right. We, we haven't been at this point. We've been, you know, just yeah, balancing at the end of the year, see how it goes and what it looks like overall and where we need to. Oh, smart. Yeah. I'm sorry, could you just um, tell me what the acronym UTV stands for? Um, utility vehicle. Okay. Or side by side, a, t a toy, fun toy. Oh, it's not. A it's, it's, a it like fun. It's, a, it's a work toy. I know, but it's it a work like, tool. Not it looks like fun.
So those are the two major ones that you see on there. Um, <clears throat> where is the, uh, we're, we're going to do a bus for the ambulance too, correct? That's going to be the new uh, gurney lift. The, oh, the one we approved? The, yeah, uh, so that, that, that's yeah. coming from capital. Uh -huh. So that that payment expense would come out of where you looked at your um, yeah, where we looked at the total. It would come right off the top in there to pay for that. But it would come out of annuals. Uh, no, it will come out of capital account. So the so where your account says um, I don't think we paid that payment yet. But where your account on the the first page we looked at said one hundred and I think it was one hundred forty thousand. Yes, mm -hmm. so that thirty thousand would come out of there and drop that to one hundred and ten thousand. Did you buy that yet? So it's been ordered. It will be shipped and delivered to a company in Massachusetts. It should arrive sometime beginning to mid January down there, and then the truck will be shipped down there for a week for installation. Oh, it was like what nineteen thousand was that? I can't remember how much that was. It was so thirty thousand. It was just under thirty thousand yeah. for the unit, and the unit was twenty three thousand, and then there was a service contract, a five year service contract and maintenance on it that covers parts of repairs for the service techs to come here and work on it. Any other questions on the, the fire budget? Again, looking at the percentage wise, we're right in where we need to be on that. It's one thing to mention, I guess, on the fire side of things, um, for the building up on the hill, we did work with the town to put in a new water line. We had a water line break between the town garage and the fire station. So we worked with Guthrie to get a new water line put in over the station. And remind me, that's the station is being used by East Montpelier Hill. Um, well, no, half of it's our, well, half of it's got fire trucks in it, the other half that they have kind of equipment. Right. And that's been something three years? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. 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 I think we're we're tracking like we normally do. So, you know, some of the things we take heavy hits on um, early on in the year, and then they, you know, they slow down based on payment schedules and things like that. Obviously, the building one was a big one for the maintenance that we needed to do. And again, some of that was um, probably going to fall maybe into last year, but just because of timing and availability for the company, um, Vermont Mechanical. That's yeah. the service systems are the ones who install the system here. You know, yeah. just availability, I think, is more so than to this year. All right. No other questions on that? Oh. Nope. Um, page eight is profit and loss budget versus actual on the fire. I think that's the tail end of the, the bottom of your page seven. Mm -hmm. oh. Profit and loss for the actual fire. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a little short page. Yeah. Got it. You got it, Seth? Yep. Again, mostly what you see there is you see capital expenditures towards um, equipment and the truck payments. Showing it coming out of the capital account or capital activity at the the minus of the 23,000. Any questions so on that? Um, right, so that, so if you go remember back on the um, asset page on the front, did we talk about the two truck loans for the uh, rescue two and the ambulance oh, rescue okay. three? So those payments automatically come out of the, the capital. So East Montpelier Fire Department holds the note 
on those trucks with North Country Federal Credit Union. And then we pay that um, payment. So that's the amount for that period of time? That's what we pay to, right. Um, let's go. Oh, you want to look at the capital plan? No, I'm sure we can look at that now. Seth, you've got the capital plan? I do. Just got to dig it out. Okay. Um, So we've made a, a couple of revisions on this. One of the key ones is um, the yearly revenue amount. It's down, it's the third line up from the bottom, shows 130,000. Yeah. We actually made yep. an increase on that line from what it was designating before, because over the last couple of years, we seem to be averaging um, in the 150 or so range for revenue collections. So we've moved that up a little bit from what it was set at, I believe it was 100,000 prior to this. So now it's 100. We have it as 130,000 because the revenue seems to be holding itself. The number of calls okay. seem to be holding themselves and the collection rate is holding strong. So. I'm sure you've explained this before, but a line right below the 130 EMFD ambulance expense paid for. Mm -hmm. what is that? So we talked about that a minute ago with the uh, the expenses for the paramedic billing, paramedic intercepts and things. Those come out of the, the capital collections. Uh, they come out of the ambulance revenue prior yeah. to distribution. So that's a, a number that um, the 18,000 is a number that averages about what it is from year to year. And it's been consistent for I don't know, probably 10 years at that level for those payments and expenses. So those are things that are outside the budget, even though they, they have somewhat of a budgetary expense to them. Uh, part of it is because, again, when we're paying ambulance billing, we base, it's based on calls of the bill, so it fluctuates from year to year, so it's kind of hard to create a budget number. Same with the paramedic intercepts. We may have higher years where there's more paramedic intercepts than others. And, you know, again, that budget's a little hard to track. So this one covers the fluctuations with it. Now, the capital plan balance EMFD only. Mm -hmm. It's going to 107.9 for FY23 and 77 for 24. So, so when you look at, so, so this will come into the discussion on the top line, which is the engine four replacement. We've talked about that for a couple of years now. Um, and where you see the drop and the 2023 is if we were to take this on, and when it says EMFD only, is if we were funding. So since the inception of the ambulance, EMFD has paid for all the capital purchases in terms of trucks and things like that. And if we continue on that platform, um, with that truck kicking in, if it was to kick in in 2023, that's where you would see that drop to the 107. And then the fluctuation down to the <coughs> 77,000, excuse me, in the 2024 is where uh, the final year of the trucks drop off from rescue two and rescue three loans that are currently in place. And then it jumps back up from there. Did the rescue four you show, you know, that's got a, it was showing it's reflecting in 2026 at the 50,000 a, a year. Oh, it's 50. I'm sorry, I thought there was a dollar sign. <laughs> I had my glasses are fogging a little. Sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> <I'm> sorry, guys. <laughs> We can purchase an ambulance in 2026 for zero. We'll be doing great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's say that's <laughs> yeah. And it's showing. 
was a minus, what is that, a minus three? Rescue tools minus three. Which one are you looking at? Rescue, rescue tools. Rescue tools minus three. So, so that being yeah, that, right. It's working, right? Right. We haven't replaced them because we haven't needed to. We did replace, what do we replace? The cutter? I think we replaced the cutter out of sequence. Okay, that's we, what you mean by tools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Wow. Well, they're hand, they're, they're big, heavy hydraulic tools okay. for cutting vehicles apart and things. Um, so we replaced the cutter out of sequence, but everything else is still, you know, operationally running. When we did purchase um, Rescue 2, that one has a electric hydraulic pump that was built into that as well. So that gave us a secondary system that was already on the truck. Do you, I mean, in anticipating that, um, you know, you, you carry no dollars on this. Right. right. Forward, maybe a good idea. Out or something like that. Put something to that. Mm -hmm. You know it's coming at some point, so it matter when. Right. When it fails, I'm guessing it fails. Right. Instead of that, and that's replacement time. That is that is true. There is down if you look at the bottom, just two more uh, four down from there that have the equipment capital. So there is some monies into that that we could use from on the hundred thousand line. There's ten grand a year that would be earmarked into. So, you know, equipment replacement, we could use part of that to replace a tool and things. Maybe it would, maybe a good idea on that, even just to put that money in and reallocate it to that right. capital fund since you're really on par of if you know, maintain it well. Mm -hmm. and it's not, I know it's just a thought. And some of the trends going forward since they've been over, it's probably been four or five years now, they've really come online. It's a, um, tools have gone to a battery you know, system and getting away from the hydraulic pumps. Um, our hydraulic pump, on our our primary one is probably 12, 14 years old, something like that. You know, they don't get high usage, but when they work, they work pretty hard. They're running at 10,000 PSI workload. Yeah. So, um, where do you, with firefighting tools, where do you get your supplies to be under? In the budget line, that's totally different. In the budget line, yeah. Look at, at more major pieces of equipment like a, a generator that might come up or a portable pump that might come up and things. Um, so the supplies or equipment that went with you to the current capital. Um, they they very well maybe we may sit and look at that later in the year and readjust that and take monies to pay for that pump and things out of there because it is a, a capital type of item so that item would drop right now we haven't adjusted in those first four month periods but that's a possibility and you're planning on replacing looking at replacing the engine four in 2022 so engine four um, under NFPA standards, you know, they replace them typically at a 25 year marker. That one's a uh, 2000 and no, 1994 uh, currently. So, yep. um, even if, so if we were to order a truck in 2023, we most likely won't see it until sometime early 2024. Okay. Um, so that's something we'll talk about a little bit in terms of what does that look like. And, how do we do that going forward and things? So you're you know, looking to replace it, it's just the here. Th that's the goal would be the plan to order. Right. Yeah. yeah, you know, and we've carried it over now for extra, you know, it's got extra life into it now. Um, and it's still, you know, some of the things we know is like we've got some broken frame mounts onto there that you can't get to without actually removing the whole body off the back of it. But we know we fixed and repaired all the ones and we've had it inspected annually over the last years to make sure that it's safe to operate and run. Um, one of the biggest things you see in the span of that age of truck is the safety equipment <coughs> and the safety features on the truck operationally and how they manage the stability of them and things like that, the different sensors that are in the new trucks. Um, so, you know, in terms of the truck operating, it still pumps, it drives, it does everything it needs to do on that. It's just, it's at its lifespan where you, you start to rotate that through. And then the engine two from down here would become the, 
a secondary right, truck right. response, backup truck, reserve truck, whatever technology or terminology you want to use for that. Mm -hmm. Do you is there more and more obsolescence with the components of these trucks now? I mean, 25 years is a long time in today's technology world. Right. Are you running into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see a lot of it. So if you were to take that truck and park it next to Rescue 2, which is our newest truck, um, the, the safety features and things in there, just like, for instance, seatbelt sensors, right? I can tell from that truck on the cab-mounted, the dash-mounted uh, controller, who's in what seat and if they're buckled in or not, you know, and the alarms go off, so it's, you know, you don't move without a buckled in situation. So things like that, you know, the anti-roll mechanisms that they're building into trucks now, um, are significantly different than they were back then. <clears throat> and you look into purchasing new utility one vehicle in 26. Um, so that would that would not happen in 2023. You know that would again be kicked down the road a little bit. What we try, what you try to do with the capital plans is look at the forecast lifespan of the equipment uh -huh. and then replace them accordingly. You know, and again, it, it's kind of a, a moving um, target, if you will, that. You know, we might look at it this year and say, okay, we need to do that. But like that truck, we need to put some paint into that truck because we can start to see it bubbling underneath. You know, I think I've got a leak in the exhaust on the head gasket up there. You know, so we've got some work to put into that truck to um, keep it going forward. But our plan is to, you know, carry that forward <coughs> for now, for, you know, get some more life out of it. Because again, it doesn't run every day, you know, when it's, and that's the thing with fire apparatus and things overall is it doesn't run a lot of miles which is not necessarily the greatest thing for them but when they work they work hard you know yeah. and they're very heavy trucks and so that they're out when they're going over the roads it's very straining or strenuous on the frame structures and things like that what is the utility i mean what's, what's the so the utility is the pickup truck that sits in the front oh okay so that carries, um, we do carry some brush fire equipment on there with small pumps. We do carry cones and things on there and emergency signs for car accidents and things like that. So that would come out. Um, it's also a people transporter that, you know, if you have to go mutual aid somewhere, we may take a truck in that with additional resources to go. Right. And now with the trailer, we're filling the trailer with it. <clears throat> And the FDBA line, is that for all of the tanks or mm -hmm. is that what the, so you buy them as a group and then there's a lifespan for the tank? So there's a different lifespan to the uh, composite fiberglass tanks versus what the pack frames are. So we have to replace the bottles before we have to actually replace the frames. When we did the last purchase, um, well, I don't recall the exact year. It's probably been 10 years at this point, maybe a little bit longer. We had to replace everything because we had some very old pack frames and regulators and controls and things for them, as well as our SCBA bottles were outdated. And actually, we still at that point had some that were still steel. So everything now is a 4,500 PSI um, composite bottle system. Did they do any kind of like, obviously with the hydro test any of those or, or, or? So we do have to hydro test the bottles. Yeah, yeah and keep those up to spec and standards under those. And they flow test the um, regulators on the, the packs themselves and things. So that gets done on a regular basis. No, no, they have, oh, to, right. they have to go out and be done. And then the same thing with people um, in fit testing for the masks. We have to go through a series of fit tests on a regular basis for people. Yeah. And again, same thing, same thing with those. You know, when you talk about like trucks and technologies and things, the technology that's in the new air packs versus where ours are is dramatically different for what the capabilities are and things now. And, you know, and when ours, we, because we had to do such a large purchase at that point, we kind of bought the tail end of the model versus buy into the new one that was on the market because it was significant savings and allowed us to replace everything, all of our models. So. Do you foresee like a problem, you know, where, where we, where replacements are gonna to have to become more and more frequent because of the technology alone? Or like, do you think this is, that's guesswork, I guess. But it all depends on how much money you have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. If you don't have the money, you're not gonna do it anyway. Right. Yeah. right. Um, I think there's some things that the technologies, you know, there's maybe small tweaks to it, but it's not as dramatic as certain other features. 
you know, a lot of the things <clears throat> like you would see between the, the air packs we have now and the air packs that are currently on the market have a lot to do with firefighter safety. And, you know, the, the warning sensors and things that are on them, the lights that are on them and, you know, different blinking patterns and things like that. that that's probably the most dramatic pieces you're seeing. And Otherwise, the it's the same. Right. Yeah. yeah. Pack frames are really similar. You know, they may change and make adjustments to, you know, the lumbar supports or things like that a little bit to make it a little more comfortable and everything. But for the most part, it's just, it's more the life safety piece that comes into play. You know, in the past devices where if somebody was to stop moving or something that are built into those and things. Any other questions on the capital? Um, there was a, the next page for you guys. It doesn't. They actually don't have numbers on. Do you have something? Well, that's where my page is then. That's where my page is. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are there supposed to be more? Um, no. I think these were just um, these were just some of the details we we talked about actually looking at them for the, like the contract pay for the uh, vaccine clinics. We just talked about those. So. <laughs> you see your papers all slide. They don't fall off. Okay. So um, I think we're on to the nope, the fiscal twenty three budget. Page two. It'll be page two. <clears throat> ambulance. Seth, do you have that one? Uh, ambulance. Uh, budget. Yeah, I do. Okay. Ambulance budget 23? Yes. Mm -hmm. I do. So the first two columns are your FY21 actuals versus your budget. Yep. And then um, the FY22, which our current budget against what I proposed budget for FY23. Yeah. So there's no increase for Plainfield and Marshfield in FY. Um, their contracts are coming up for mm -hmm. renewal, so they will go up the, the typical 3% that they've been going up. Okay. And our increase is 8.5. So the one, um, probably the biggest note is there is the, uh, the 5,500 salary at the 37.5. Um, there was a page, it should have been. Is that this? Um, I think I was just reading it. Limit on the front of, talk about this. Yes. Just a minute. There was a page one. Actually, it was marked on page one. Yeah, yes. It, yeah. So that, so that walks through. Um, it is about the salary that we talked about. Right. Yeah. So we did the increases of the. The 37.5 for the, the two years. And then this year was actually proposed at 75,000. Um, yeah, I just saw that. What did I see? It's at the very top paragraph. Yeah, top paragraph. Yeah. Third to the last. Seth, do you have pay? Um, you may not have this. I didn't do those details, so he won't have it. Okay. It's a different page in the ambulance budget one? It is. This is one that just basically was a summary of the. Um, Actions by the select boards to increase the salary budgets from the last three years. It was two okay, yep. seven five, and then the proposed third year, which would be this year, would be uh, seventy five thousand. Yeah. Yeah. What we've asked for um, to do is saying let's split that down and do thirty seven five this year, and then thirty seven five next year instead of taking such a big hit against the towns on the two. Right. Thousand. Okay. Job. 
but I don't have the page, but I definitely understand the concept. So, okay, I'm good. Hold it. You're gonna memory like a steel trap. Start by line. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess we can't be unhappy about that. I mean, at least that spreads it out a little bit for us and makes yeah. it easier on the town. Yep. Well, yeah, and that's why we did it that way. Yeah. Yeah. We're taking the full hit at once. As long as you're covering your salaries and you're not going behind. Right. No, I think that for that and that in most everything, there's a lot of things that stay fairly flat under there. There's a couple increases, you know, insurance, obviously. Um, now, is insurance going down? <clears throat> no, it goes up 2000. Interesting, because when we're looking at our Calus town budget, the insurance premiums, our insurance is going to go down. Some went down because of COVID, like workers' comp exposure mm -hmm. went down because people were going out. No, no? this is, this is no. I, yeah. this, I'm thinking. Like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were saying, I was saying, well, I thought they did. No, I mean, that's when we went. Sorry. <laughs> no, we're talking Blue Cross Blue Shield. Our health insurance. Yeah, it might be just your occurrence, what 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 it's costing for the people you yeah. have on or you have. Or you're talking about your own town and your own yeah. folks. Yeah. It's not going down a lot, but it's a little bit. It's just it's interesting to me that it that it is. Yeah, you know, don't complain about it. On, right? No. <laughs> we haven't been offered a discount. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, right. yeah, a little, little bit higher risk. More than a library. <laughs> a library. <laughs> And dispatch is staying the same. Um, so dispatch does take some oh, increase. The fire side stays pretty close, but if you look to um, the, M, I mean, sorry, the fire side is going to take the impact of the increase in there, the 2.5%. Yeah, because dispatch is only going at $295. Yeah, that's right. We just entered a new contract where, um, or it's in the process of being completed. That's a two and a half percent increase a year, I think is what it is. And that's capital S? Yes. Yes. Did you train I see the transfer from contingency to operating to fifteen thousand. Yes. Is so for expenses is that for expenses. So we also so over the course of time we have um, contributed money some towards the budget from the capital expenditure money. Mm -hmm. And so we decided that we would put in 15,000 from the capital towards the budget again to help keep the numbers um, you know in line as much as possible without dramatic increases and things and so that's allowed us to keep the fire budget at the um, what is it, about a five thousand dollar increase and then the ambulance goes up obviously the biggest jump is because of the salary piece okay so the ambulance budget is going up $46,000. And the fire is up 2.95%. It doesn't get the dollar amount like this one. Right, but if you look at the two lines beside each other, it's yeah. about $5,000. Yeah. yeah, pretty close. And so the ambulance budget really is only going up about 9,000 without the salary increase. You know, overall in the line, so they're, they're staying pretty flat. How are you doing getting folks? You know, it's a it's a, it's a fluctuating pool. Yeah. Um, so we've got some new candidates. We just hired a new uh, AMT. He'll be starting with us, and um, we've got a paramedic application on my desk that I've got to call back. So. Yeah. Good to know. Any questions on um, the proposal for the ambulance? I, so. I, mean, I guess we've kind of been talking about both. Anything on the fire budget? Well, what is, is the wait, on the ambulance to, COVID expense unbudgeted? That is right. That's the that's the again the revenues that came in. So we took in a number of different revenues. Is one is the contract for doing. Vaccine clinics. Vaccine. We also took in seventeen thousand um, dollars towards first responders that they received. Well, I call it a bonus. They re they received a reimbursement 
for working through the COVID. Yeah, so that was a percentage base based on hours worked as hazard pay, right? Mm -hmm. And okay, that's what this hazard pay is. And, and that falls into those categories of what that is, you think, sir? Good. We also received a little bit of offset money on the um, the ambulance that state did a, I don't know how they did the percentages, but they basically told us what it was going to be. And so we received some money towards that as well for the, um, they calculated a number per call that they estimated that we may have lost during the COVID time. Mm -hmm. so. Are you requiring the um so m most everybody is vaccinated we are not mandating it yet at this point um biden if he gets his way with some of the regulations that are on the table it will become mandatory uh, because we take medicaid and medicare money and uh, right now we haven't hit that threshold most of the target place has been over 100 employees um so it's it most likely could be coming down the line if, especially if things keep going the way they're going but so you have unvaccinated personnel showing up at the house of vulnerable people so we m most everybody we only have one i think at this point that's not vaccinated but everybody's wearing precautions and safety equipment on all times we all have you know uh, n95 you know, the masks and goggles and clothes and all that kind of thing. So and they kind of do mandatory testing on them weekly, or is that? Yeah, I thought if they weren't vaccinated, they had to do mandatory testing. State we did it wherever we are. Right. So there's so there's no there's no mandate that it has to. Um, we haven't instituted that yet. If there's an exposure, we we have standards in place that would you know take on that if there was an exposure. But the exposure could come from them to whoever they're servicing. Yeah, at risk. Yeah. I guess I'm just curious why you're not requiring to be vaccinated or be vaccinated. Um, probably the largest part is it's a hard position to take. That, that, that there's no. There's evidence that would say you should, but there's no regulatory piece that says you have to. And so that becomes the same thing you're seeing fought out in the business world all over the place as, as employees, employers, right? So look at the National Guards and, you know, they're being told that these guys have to quit their jobs after so many years of service. And yet, then you've got states that are then going out and fighting that, but saying, look, you can't do this. You can't force these guys to have to, you know, go become vaccinated. So we don't have, we don't have the legal bounds to do it other than if we just fire somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. That that's that's your recourse. And I'm just uh, we just the county council here just have the mask mandate. Right. And I'm just we're providing a large portion of your funding, and um, I'm just you know I we haven't made a recommendation to the county the fire department, but if if you're looking for a backstop for regulation or authority to impose a vaccine requirement, if your funding sources are asking or recommending or requiring that employees who interact with the public, in particular vulnerable populations, be vaccinated, would that be a policy that you would And we have a, a I think that'd be fairly employees as well. Yeah. I think that'd be fairly far reaching on the town side, to be honest. Um, well, I'm, I guess what I'm hearing you say is one of the reasons why you are not selected to do that is because there's no requirement or no mandate. Well, there's not, but that wouldn't come from the town. These are these are fire department employees and things. So there's no, oh, but I there's no there's no federal mandate that's saying. You all businesses have to have all employees mandated or vaccinated. I mean, you're telling me that everybody who works for the town is vaccinated. What what we're saying is that people who work for the town, <clears throat> they if they're not vaccinated, they have to go in and be tested weekly. 
I think what I heard Judy <coughs> say. And that's everybody, that's all of your yep. listers, yep. Or <coughs> everybody who works there? The employees, all the employees. Not the, not, not, not necessarily the, the elected people. Yeah. So we don't have control over them. I mean, we're elected, but they're, but they're, they're working, elected. They're working in the same environment, right? Yeah, but we don't have any control over elected, elected. people. They're the we, same as we are. We, we can't <laughs> fire elected people. But I think what I heard you to say was that the funding to run the fire department and the ambulance is coming from money from the town. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it's, and I, I thought you had said one of the reasons why a lot of people are getting it is because if they don't, there's a recourse for a penalty. And as a member of the select board of the town of East Montpelier, I have an interest in protecting the safety of our community. And we exercise the power that we have to do as much as we can to protect the safety of our community members. We also have the power of the purse in the sense that we're contributing to the government <coughs> budget of East Montpelier Fire Department. And I I, I assumed that the ambulance personnel, because they're in health care, would have been vaccinated, but you cleared that up for me. That's not necessarily the case. And, but now I'm, in light of um, the situation we're still in, that, 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 you know, wondering if we can encourage you to have that requirement for your personnel. <coughs> We'll take it under advisement. I mean, you can go to the hospital and everybody's not vaccinated there. But they have a mandate that is going to, my understanding is healthcare workers, there is a mandate. It, it's actually, it was thrown out and then a lot of it's been retracted back. Well, I think we could argue this back and forth for hours, but. We're having we're having good discussion on this. I, right. I, like, I, like I said, I think it's fairly far reaching by the town to say that. Of that's but, where we're at. But, well, but the town, with, a, with our own with our own employees, um, the people who we can fire, um, we've asked that they, if they're not vaccinated, then they have to go for testing. I think that would be as a minimum. You guys should be doing that. Right. I mean, yeah. If you're looking at being safety and health conscious, yeah. and you're you're kind of the up, you're kind of the flame of, you know of safety and health consciousness and right. in in all these towns you would right. think that you would at least have a, a request that the people get tested that's yeah. a week. Yeah, by the fact that you're at risk <clears throat> very at risk some people are very at risk right <clears throat> so that's where it's, you know, that i mean i don't think that goes that's really going overboard just asking somebody to test to see if they have it or not yeah. on a weekly basis if they're not vaccinated there's yeah. a good chance they're going to have it that's sooner or later here so I asked on East Montpelier Front Porch Forum last week uh, for just suggestions on what we in the select board should do at our Monday meeting when we we're considering a mask mandate. And the feedback that we got from townspeople was six to one in favor of the mask mandate that we ended up passing. So I wonder if we went to Front Porch Forum and said, hey, the fire department and the ambulance service come to your homes and interact with vulnerable people, and not all of them are vaccinated. Vaccinated, do you think there should be a vaccination mandate for the fire department and ambulance service? I wonder what the feedback would be. I, I'm guessing it'd be guessing strongly in favor of it. Yeah. Strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if somebody's got a health reason not to be vaccinated, that's different. Well, is it but, for, for well, this but, position? No, but, they, but then they have to get tested. Right. In any and, and I don't think it's too hard. I mean, it's too much of a overreach to ask somebody to get tested. Quite easy. And I can see, and I can see why you wouldn't want to fire someone because you can't hardly hire anyone. Yeah, right. And I can understand that as a, as, you know, as an employer, you wouldn't want to do that. But, but the testing piece, I mean, you can buy the kits and do it right here. Anyway, so so what's the town's position right now? We we when, have a mask. We have a vaccination and mask policy where we recommend that people be vaccinated. If you are not vaccinated, you need to be tested. And I think we we don't have very many people who aren't vaccinated yeah. either. Yeah. Not the same as you. Yeah. Or another way to put it is that we have a testing mandate yeah. that you can opt out of if you get vaccinated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah the glass is half full. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 
So can we ask you not to go in front porch for him until we discuss this? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I don't think that's a no, I don't think that, that's, that's a platform to go in. No. Thank you. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a. And will you follow nice up when you do discuss this and let us know what? You, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. What, when will you discuss it? Well, our next. Next board, next board meeting at the end of the month. Yeah. We're halfway through the month now, so. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Halfway there. We'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, and yeah, it's thank you. you. All right, haven't we kind of um, diverted the subject here? I thought we were doing budget. Yeah, well, we were, but we got, the, we got sidetracked. That's the way Is got. there any way we can continue on the budget? Yes. I would, I would like or to something related to the budget. I don't see any place on the agenda to bring it up, uh, but uh, we did get uh, the audited financials and since that's related to the budget. I'd just like to ask a quick question about that. There was concern in the audit about some other organization using East Montpelier Fire Department's employer identification number, and they've done this for a while. Who, who are these guys? Oh, is that the Boy Scouts? Um, I would think that would relate to the Boy Scouts, and they do not use it anymore. They're not even in existence anymore. So, as as a Boy Scout or Cub Scout organization, they have to have a charter sponsor. So we charter sponsored the Boy Scouts and the Cub Scouts that were here in town. Okay. And no, they're actually they can't operate without it. And part of the tax life. So actually, all of their assets become ours. Uh -huh. So they don't have control over, even though it's their money in there per se, it's it's all under our control and our assets. So the, the risk factors are really low to that. Okay, so that's an outdated comment because the organization- Well, the organizations exist. aren't even in existence yeah. anymore. You don't have a Cub Scout or a Boy Scout right. around anymore. Right, okay, thank you. Yeah. They would, have, they would have caught the tail end probably of the Cub Scouts. You know, close it down. Yeah. So are we on call log review? Yeah, I actually don't, I apologize what the packets were put together. We actually don't have that page on there. I can tell you in the, the calendar year for um, 2021, we're at, I think, about 670, 675 calls so far. The calendar year for 2021? For 2021. Here's the calendar year 2020. Well, um, we typically show you guys on the, so I don't have that breakdown in there that she didn't make the packet. Um, the last year we ended around 700 for the year, so we're on track. We'll surpass. Like we'll surpass that this year. I think we'll be a little over 700. Yeah. And Seth had questions about the budget. That's part of the. Well, that's agenda. part of the. We usually yeah. review the log as part of the budget discussion. But I thought he had specific questions about. The budget. I don't know. Have <laughs> I just didn't want to talk about uh, vaccines anymore when it wasn't really on the agenda and we needed, needed to finish up the budget. Well, I think we, is, it, is there any other questions? Is there any other questions on the budget? I think we've gotten through the proposals on those. Seth, do you have any other questions? Do no, I have no questions on the budget. Okay. Anybody else? No. All right, so we're good with the budget piece. We can close off on that. Yeah. I think it was really well done. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. I think in terms of the agenda, we've talked about, we just talked about the call out, we talked about the loans in the contract, we talked about the power load system for strikers, we've talked about COVID updates where we're at. Um, Are we on number nine? Number nine would be the last um, discussion piece we have, unless there's something else anybody wants to discuss before that. Okay. Um, so Seth, number nine on the, on the, um, my agenda is the discussion on the replacement of engine four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that's, yep. So I wanna, I wanna start right on the top with, um, I put in four, so on the list here, so, um, there's four pieces. A is proposed manufacturer, B proposed timeline, C the estimated current cost, and D the conceptual purchase options. So on the proposed manufacturer, um, we've looked at a number of vendors, but one of the ones we really um, want to use is Toyn, Toyn, T-O-Y-N-E. They're an American-made truck um, in the Midwest, as many are. Um, 
they they provide a, a quality custom build product at the end of the day. And uh, for full disclosure, Toby is a representative for that company. However, Toby is totally exempt from this process. He has no part in this truck um, committee or planning. It's actually been his boss from out of New York State that's been driving here to meet with us. Um, Toby is not getting his typical percentage that he would get on the sale of a fire truck. That has all uh, been erased out of this proposal and things. So he has disqualified himself as being a representative for this truck. So we wanted to put that under the table, for full disclosure on the front side. Good, thank you. Is there any questions for that or concerns? Um, nope. I think in terms of the proposed manufacturer and why we're choosing the one and not necessarily wanting to put it out to the open market for bid, I think the towns have kind of adopted some of the similar positions when you guys buy trucks and things like that. You guys kind of narrow down to certain types of trucks you like by the town and you know what works well for you and how you feel the maintenance and things is overall. And so we're kind of in that same position on this. Sometimes it costs you a little bit more, sometimes it costs you a little bit less. Have you used them before? Um, we have not used these guys before. We've seen a number of the trucks. There is, um, I don't know how many total in Vermont, but there's multiple trucks in Vermont from this manufacturer and things. And they're, they're building a, a well-built, the last truck that he built was uh, engine two, and that was built by VTAC in Williamstown, in which they're no longer in business. The, the person who owned that is retired, and then when he did, the business actually closed. So, but that was a small shop, you know, building however many trucks a year, do custom, they did a lot of repairs and things like that. But uh, so, any questions on the manufacturer or things on nope. there? So the proposed timeline, you know, we would like to see it go out for purchase in 2023. Um, FY23, FY yes. Or calendar, either way, they're working the same sort of equation at this point. It wouldn't happen until after the first of the year. Um, we have an estimated current cost in the range of the 425,000. Obviously, as you guys know, I think the town and some of you guys are looking at trucks and you know that the markets are fluctuating with cost of goods and things and availability. This isn't something you go buy off the lot. The things you know, some material cost fluctuations are a driving factor that can, nobody can predict at this point. You know, some things are going up, some things are going down. So depending on what it is. You know, right now, steel costs and things are on the rise a little bit. Um, the only certainty is we know with the chassis the chassis would be a Freightliner, and uh, it would be a, a commercial cab instead of a custom cab. Um, the difference being with that, if anybody has any question on that, the difference is like a regular truck cab is what they call commercial. The custom cabs are typically the cab over multi-crew trucks. This would be a commercial. This would be a commercial. And John Bray Bell is here. He would ask you about what you so there's not or a, or a, what do they call that a model or yeah a demo model demo, that's it. yeah so some of the issues with the demo models is a lot of the demo models are built for city type trucks um, because they, they can move them quicker which means they have more pretty cookie cutter um, features to them they may not have a big enough motor for what you put in for a truck here versus a, a city truck they have less water on them than we would have. They may not have a foam system. So all of those things can be retrofitted into the truck, but you will pay more to retrofit them after the truck has been built because they actually have to take things apart to do that work. Now, like this Freightliner thing you're talking about, are the fire trucks, are they all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, or just standard? Uh, They're typical, just rear-wheel drive. Rear -wheel. I mean, you can do four-wheel drive models and things, um, that sets the trucks up significantly higher, typically, uh, and it costs, you know, it's an, again, an added cost to go to a four-wheel drive model and things. So we typically <laughs> run change. We go as far as we can and lug hose the rest of the way. <clears throat> so those are some of the things you give up by trying to buy a demo. And 
honestly, there's not demos that are on the market. We've looked at some of them to see. I think the Toyn has one demo. That is not even close to what we would look for for a truck. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we're just covering our bases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, we've looked at all those again. Even in the used market, the used markets are empty these days. So there's not, but you know, the, when we purchased Rescue 2 and found that it's a used one out in New York State, we lucked out for that and the features it has and things. And again, a lot of things go into it, you know, how your compartments are configured, what your foam system is, what, how do your hose beds work, you know, what do you carry for equipment, you know, some. Some departments carry a lot less than hose. We have to carry quite a bit because of the rural area. Quite a bit for, you know, we do. Roads. Yeah, so that, you know, that all factors into it. If you don't have big enough hose beds, you can't get them in, you know. So if you if you have a hydrant system, obviously you don't need all the suction hoses that we carry, you know. Um, so different things like that are features that aren't part of it, you know, when you buy those stock trucks. Um, and water. And water we carry more water. Yeah, typical. <clears throat> yeah, because you have to go out into such a rural area. Right. Yep. We're carrying almost 500 gallons more water than most of the trucks come through. How many tons are available? Like, are from where it goes? Is that two something or a piece of the time of year. Um, right. And when they're frozen, it's not too good. We when they're dried up, they're not too good either. Right. <laughs> Right, so yeah, so when you look at a frozen pond, they figure that you lose on a, a normal winter, you could lose three feet of water level based on the um, just water levels changing and also the ice thickness that goes through. And that's why we do the dry hydrants um, that you see out and around in different pond locations that are accessible from, they have to be typically accessible from roadsides. We do have some on private property where they've allowed us to do a pond access. Um, how many do we have between Cal and East Montpelier? 15? I know, I think they're... 15, 18? I know we're, I know we're several. <coughs> right. How many? What's the furthest you'd find yourself from a dry hydrant? Five miles, six miles. Really? So if you take that on an icy winter road and the truck's sloshing water as they go down the road, yeah, it becomes very icy very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we just got the one we put in the Codling Road. Um, year and a half ago or so down into the river there and things but we don't have otherwise that's the only one right down in the immediate village area here you know the next closest one there is the one uh, that's at Jean Troyes pond which we it's wouldn't even use it. it's, it's silted all in and things at this point um, and then the Templeton one's always been a decent one for us but so when you look at from here to Templeton road if you're hauling water backwards or North Montpelier is the one in North Montpelier it's that's a long haul. Not only are you hauling it up the hill, but you know, you're hauling three miles. Four miles. Yeah. And the school pond, can you tap into that for non school? Areas? We can. Yeah, yeah we can. There's 90,000 gallons in that pond that's there that we can take off the hydrant. Again, that's not a pressurized hydrant system. It's a you know, static hydrant from the pond levels and pressure, right. but we can draft it in. Right. So, are you looking at a total cost of this freightliner commercial cab? However, you wanted it retrofitted. Mm -hmm. Total cost. Mm -hmm. That's what we have for a current estimate on there. And the timeline is calendar year 2023. So, the, so we can, let's just say we signed a contract tonight, and that truck would actually be delivered. It will say it's delivered in a year. The the amount for the truck cost actually wouldn't be due until the truck is delivered. Right. <clears throat> there is some incentives along the way if you decided, okay, um, one of the payments was if you paid 100000 for the chassis upon delivery of the chassis to them, you would save, I think it was $2,700 or $2,800. And That's it? W yeah. So whether it's worth doing that or you just hold it all to the end and you pay at one time again, that was some of the discussions of thinking how it gets paid for. What is that whistle? It's the air handlers. Um, too much hot air in here, so the <laughs> CO sensors go off. So it must that. be Seth. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> oh, it yeah. isn't me. <laughs> it's the people in the room. Come on, folks. Thanks, Seth. So. Blah blah blah. <laughs> okay.
Yeah. yeah, so I guess that's some of the discussion we need to have, you know, it's how, how would we pay for that truck and things. Um, you know, I think on this one, we're not necessarily in a position looking at the long term of the capital to say we would take on 100% of it and, you know, purchase the whole thing and fully pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, we're, our discussion has kind of been the proposal that we would ask the two towns to split the cost of 200000 of it and we would pay everything additional above and beyond that. So you would be asking the town, the two towns, to do our split of two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Two thirds, one third, yeah. Okay. And I guess then the question is, you know, how, how does that get paid for? Uh, you know, again, those are have to be discussions. Is it, you know, bonded out? Is it, you know, does? Um, I think in the past there's been loans that have split engine two was the last one that had a split on it. Mm -hmm. Callus had a, a loan it took out in the East Ball Fair took out a loan on that truck. I don't okay. know who was the primary bond on there. Yeah and if we're, we take out a loan longer than I think it's a year we have to get voter approval. Is that right Bruce? Depends on what program you use. You can get a five year note. Equipment note equipment notes are going to be up to five years. If you're buying something that wasn't equipment, it was capital, you'd have to have a vote <clears throat> for the public. Well, well, <clears throat> There's something about a year. Well, equipment's different than, right. A normal loan, um, a municipality can't normally take a loan for more than a year without voter approval. Right, is this considered <clears throat> equipment? Yeah, it's a- yeah. That's, Is uh, that true? I thought we, we spend money out of our capital plan. Well, that's different. If you got money already allocated in your capital plan, that's, that's what select boards do. But if right. you ask to take a bond, you have to vote it. Right. Okay, but you're right, Seth. Right. I hate to say it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, okay. You, so because I you could com I could comment on that, but I'm gonna bite my tongue. So good enough. <laughs> I, I don't I, I don't think that um it's out of line for the fire department to ask for contribution for this truck. It's a big truck. If they're willing to pay um, a good share of it, and then Callis and East Montpelier split the remainder, that's you're not talking a huge amount of money. I don't, I don't think that would be necessary to bond for that. Yeah, well, it depends. I mean, we have to, we have to talk yeah. about it. Well, I think we should talk that, about it. The two uh, boards should talk about that. Maybe financing? In, in, in a separate meeting. Don't you think that's more appropriate? Conceivably, East Montpelier could take it out of our capital reserve fund and Callis could bond for it, for example, right? Yeah, there's no, yeah. nobody's yes. going to get the money. Right. But the, and, and they can bond for it without the town's permission if it's under 100000 Is that what I'm getting out of this? No. If they no. bond for 60 or 80 or or $100,000, they have to put it to the town vote? I think it, if they bond, they're going to have to tip put it to the town any, vote. It, my understanding is anything... A loan taken out for anything over a year has to be voted on by the. So again, yeah, that that's not true. Not They're totally different true. Different categories. Right, and that's what you're saying, and I don't know what the different categories well, are. Well, if you were buying a truck, you could take a five-year note on it without going to the town to the voters. If you were buying a, and this is what Jennifer and I were just commenting on, if you're buying a truck for a nonprofit. That's a whole different ballgame. You probably don't have the authority to even do a one-year note on it without getting voter approval yeah, okay. to transfer to a non yeah. It's, it's not our truck, it's their truck. Right. Or it's their truck in full, which yeah. is what we've done for yeah. ever. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to, in my mind, I'm just trying to think of the process and how we do this. How we do this yeah. and you have to put a, if you guys don't have the cash, you have to put to a bond. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but even if you have the cash, it sounds like you're going to have to put if you're if you're giving the truck to a nonprofit, you've got to have a town vote on. Is that correct? Either way, it has to go on the warning. I would think so. If you're, even if you have the cash, the town fire department and town truck, and you had the cash, you probably wouldn't have to do it. Go to a, go to a town vote. You folks, anyway, right? It, that's the problem. That's the quote. We don't that's, know. That's the quote. Uh, I mean, ultimately, we're the... it still is our asset, but it's our assets 
in our name. <laughs> well, not even in your name so much as you technically can do what you need to do with it, not our say. So, we, te we technically own the asset for yeah, operation. We have the residual rights for all that. Right. Uh, but again, the, the, if you guys remember what I put on the warning, I didn't care how you got that money. It had to go before the voters to vote on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we just have to come up with an amount if we're willing to do that. Yeah, and it sounds like they're asking us to do 200,000, two thirds and one third. Is that correct? Right. Well, it sounds like that's they're regarding that as fairly fair, and I think it is too. They're just looking to soften the blow to us right. and make, make a big contribution on that purchase. So, yeah. I mean, they, they, would, they would be happy with it, and I think it's fair. It could be split even more. They could they could ask for more money and contribute less. So, yeah. you know. No, I'm just I'm just through what we would. So can I ask you a dumb question, Ty, on yeah. this capital plan? Are you presuming that two hundred thousand? Hence, what we were seeing is actually something like a five year note. No, we have, no. So we actually didn't presume. No, it's actually written. Um, just as it says on the bottom that the BMFD was fully funding all of it. Okay. So that would actually be about the value of the note. Right. You were the five year note on it. So it would have, right. And you have it on a whole chart. Right. You mean, the, you mean, are you talking about this capital plan? That that's capital plan. Yeah. Capital plan. <laughs> I thought that was only 42.5 a year, just going by memory. That doesn't add up. Yeah. But, that, that would up. take 10 years. That would take 10 years. They put a deposit down on uh, We're putting 200 in the game. Right. right. Okay. So that makes sense. <coughs> yeah. yeah, that adds up. So we put two. So we put 200 down and they pay 42.5 for five years. That's a good deal. 22.5. Five years. Right. right. Yeah, do the math. That works out. <laughs> I think you'd probably see if, if there was 10 years written here, that would carry over onto a 10 year 40 if we were paying the whole thing. It'd be it 10 would, years. Right. If we if we were paying the whole thing, but it equated in half and it right, it works out to be pretty much the same number about right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. So okay. Bruce. Can you explain again, so I can get, so I can be clear on it, what you were saying about putting this on, on the ballots as far, is that for both towns or is that just? Well, Callis does what Callis right. wants to do. But, but, it, want to do. but you're saying that no this would have to go. No methodology we would use to pay for it, we would need to get authority from the voters to essentially transfer this money to Right. So well, even if we okay. took it out of our capital reserve, we'd have to ask permission. Okay, that's okay. right. Clear on that. And commission would be separate from the municipal budget, right. where we're transferring money to yeah. them in space. Right, and we would have to put it on our warning because we do these kinds of things from the floor. It's almost like an appropriation. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Essentially. And, and we felt it was best to do it in that, a manner like that versus try to put it into the budget and have a number that was you know, collected every year into the budget for the payment. Yeah. Yeah, this way over time, the budget stays relatively constant or it grows slowly rather than having big spikes. Yeah. yeah. Anything Fair else? Enough. Yes. So where are we? Where are we so, I, actually, uh, if we're done with the truck discussion, I've got a, one more item. Are we done with the truck discussion? Any other well, you didn't bring that up under other business, but I guess you can, right? <laughs> so this is a question for the Cali Select Board. Um, we had a discussion earlier this year. You guys wanted to modify the intermunicipal agreement to give you the freedom to put the fire department budget before your voters as a separate item. And I assume that that's how you're planning to do that. We haven't gotten that far in our budget discussion, but that was 
the idea. Right, right. So it sounds like we're all copacetic on the uh, fire and ambulance budget that have been proposed for next year. So we've got this number that is to be divided two thirds to East Montpelier, one third to Calais. And are you talking the truck now or are you talking? No, I'm talking the budget. The budget. The budget is full. So we're going to bake this into our municipal budget and so uh, that will get voted up or down. Hopefully it'll get, get voted up. It's, it's conceivable that we end up in a situation where callous voters approve of your municipal budget, but they vote down the fire department budget. And then there are a number of things that could happen. Um, one, you could have another vote and vote less for a fire department budget, in which case you guys are paying less than one third and we're still paying two thirds. Or you could come back to us and, and say, hey, the fire department, you guys need to reduce your overall budget so that East Montpelier is paying its fair share and of you know, twice of what Calis ends up paying. Or you could repurpose money from elsewhere in your budget so that uh, you cover the fire department budget one third, two thirds the way we talked about it. I'm wondering what you're thinking about that. Yeah, we got that far yet. I think we, when we had these discussions about doing things this way, one, it was thought that the possibility of that happening is probably very small. And secondly, if that happens, we'll have to figure out how to deal with it. Right. Well, the taxpayers are also gonna have to figure out how to right. This is a valuable asset. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons we're even doing it is to keep them engaged, engaged in the game. That's it's, it is a big issue, and it's a commitment. We get that. You know, so I think our words. I mean, our, our experience with taxpayers is they're very supportive of the fire department yeah. and always have been. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We, Okay. Anything else? Anything else? Any other business? Anything else? Seth, anything from Florida? The Florida office. <laughs> Not as pertains to this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I see. Can I, ask, can I ask who the person was who was talking under other business, asking about the um, how the budget will be handled? I just didn't recognize the person's name and voice. This is Carl, Kate. Oh, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Do you have everybody else in the room? All the other masks? Would you guys mind reading reading a list of who's in the room? That'd be amazing. Okay, so there's Bruce Johnson, Judith Dillon, Carl Etnair, John Jewett, Sandy Conti, Paul Ware, Fly Roland, Judy Woodbeck, Rick Kane, Denise Wheeler, Albert Petrano, Mary Brown. Oh, yeah. Were you able to get everybody? Got everybody? Thank you. So appreciate that. Thank you, Katie. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. Okay. Well, with that, we'll adjourn. Merry so, Christmas. Um, yeah. Happy holidays. I guess we're going to we're adjourning, Katie, even though we don't have a forum. But Seth, are you what declaring you us adjourned? Um, I, I was waiting for a motion. I vote that we adjourn. I second it. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> How long are you in Florida? Um, a long time. No, <laughs> only another, only another five, six days at this point. But uh, we come down here pretty often in the winter because we've got we've got horses to take care of and things of that nature. You gotta play polo. Our, and I play polo every week. Yeah, and okay. we're training horses and we're doing lots of stuff. So anyway, it's nice weather and it's beautiful. Yeah. So keep it's it's warm because I'm coming down. <laughs> 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 <laughs>